Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Welcome back, guys. Uh, we're bringing you certain topics in shorter blurbs in order to see what triggers the system, basically, uh, as they are removing videos and, and giving out strikes again. So we did this. This was a real good, fun, interesting, exciting update, Galactic Federation update. Timelines have now been shattered. We are on an all-new path. Yeah, absolutely. I do think we can throw out some prophecies. But first, we want to thank our patrons. Yay! We want to uh, say a huge thank you to Listen Good, uh, Michelle, Daria, and Emily. You guys help keep us going and allow us to keep doing this work because, yeah, they, they kind of, I don't know, we, we, we upset somebody. So <laughs> we need your help. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, we, we upset the system because, again, with your help, we are exposing the system. And those are our newest patrons. So, again, thank you guys so much. UK Prime Minister Sir Keir Starmer isn't concerned about the risk of nuclear war with Russia. Uh, yeah, as he is po poised to join Biden in giving Zelensky the green light to use UK supplied missiles for strikes inside Russia. 30% of the children in the UK live in poverty. Boy, it wasn't that way in the past. Nearly one in five people in the UK live in poverty. While British citizens struggle under the weight of worsening cost of living crisis, Sir, Sir Keir Starmer is focused on doing everything. Uh, yeah, the power structure that, that has put him in place wants him to do. You know, meanwhile, people in Britain are crying for help as their living standards worsen and they struggle to get by. What does he do? He potentially makes the entire country a target of Russian nuclear missiles instead. And in fact, there was also released by Russian TV uh, yesterday um, this this little animated illustration of targeting certain key European cities. And uh, the statement was made it only really takes three uh, big strikes to wipe out uh, British civilization. Uh, you know, again, we, we don't, none, no rational person wants to do this. And when you realize again that he says immediately, Ukraine, we got to support Ukraine. Ukraine didn't exist in the 1970s as a nation. Or, you know, before that, it was brought about by the disintegration of the Soviet Union. And, you know, again, if you ask people, well, would you prefer to live under, you know, this or that uh, political structure? The reality is when we look to the countries themselves, and if you really look critically with a critical eye and you note the differences of, of life in, say, Moscow today with life in, say, you know, uh, London or New York or you know, maybe in Detroit or, or maybe over in, you know, some other city, how much does it really affect us? How much does it truly affect us? Who is really in power? Because the reality is, you know, the power structure, well, it's like a club. And I think people are, are really starting to get the fact that it is kind of a club. And, you know, whether you're a Russian citizen, a Chinese citizen, a U.S. is, and it's it. You're not in the club unless you're part of the uh, what appears to be the upper echelon ruling uh, system. Again, when you look to history, you'll see kings and queens, and uh, you know the the royalty going to war against each other. And meanwhile, in the tens of thousands or more at times, you have the average citizens being conscripted for war they lose their lives and then the kings and the queens make nice and they marry off daughters and sons it didn't it's no sweat off their noses because they're not the ones out there being pounded and this is what people are waking up to they're they're, they're not the ones that are losing their lives i mean they're still having their caviar and their tea and their crumpets and you know meanwhile people are are paying you know, seven fifty for some organic potatoes, or 
you know, twenty dollars for a steak that that is, um, you know, again, free range and maybe not loaded with hormones and uh, toxins. This is absolutely a system which people are waking up to the fact has never cared about you, never, ever, ever cared about you. And you have the farmers here protesting the agricultural policies. No farmers, no food. Yeah, as they want to tax them again, the taxes again. This, this, all, all this money, this whole system, it supports a club. It's just a club. And so let's listen to this. You know, this, this is a British farmer revealing a scheme here. Again, the government is giving me two and a half thousand pounds for the next three years to do that. Right. The next thing I'm going to tell you is unreal because now we've been offered two and a half thousand pounds. To join a scheme for three years, and we don't supply you anything. Now listen yeah. to that. We're going to go hungry. I am going to plow a field. I'm going to put spring barley in. I'm going to get £440 off the government per acre. Per acre. Okay? But when it comes to crop size, leave it rot in the ground. So I don't get no straw for the cattle. You don't get nothing for your bread, for everything we make. Okay? But I can also plant bee mix, which is for birds and bees. <laughs> I can plant wild bird seed, which is for wild birds. I can also be paid to buy a ton of wild bird seed like anybody puts in their garden for the birds and drew it out on the ground. Once a week, I can get paid for that. Now my accountant says, do it. Because in doing that, I've not got to buy fertilizer, which since the Ukraine war, it's gone from 250 pounds an acre to a, th a ton, sorry, to a thousand pounds a ton. So in order to fertilize your food, I've got to buy fertilizer at a thousand pounds a ton. It's come down a little bit and sometimes and it goes up a little bit. But that's basically where we are. So I've now got a crop that I don't have to spray. I don't have to send nobody out there with a tractor. I don't have to fertilize it. So I can just leave it in the ground and let it all. I pick up my 440 pounds an acre. This is exactly how the system works. It is an atrocity. And the other thing to realize, too, is what's in that fertilizer? What type of chemicals, what type of you know substances are in that fertilizer that are also kick-starting a lot of disease? And the same thing with, obviously, he's talked about spraying. What are they spraying? Which, again, ends up causing a lot of disease, which ends up sending you you know, to the uh, DR, which ends up bringing a lot of profits when they write you some sort of script or do some sort of procedure. And this is all done with your tax money that they collect, whether you're in the UK, US, or anywhere else. This is how the system works. And people are waking up to this fact. Uh, you know, this is, again, from Dodge, Department of Government Efficiency. We know who's going to be heading that, right? You know, if Pentagon fails seventh audit in a row, 200 billion here, billion there, 236 billion, 824 billion, unaccounted for. It's all basically, you could view it as money laundering, you could view it as pure theft. Uh, however, you view it, it is an atrocity that, again, they do this with our own tax money. This is your own blood, sweat, and tears. That they take from you, they forcibly take from you, because if you don't pay your taxes, you'll end up going to jail or losing everything you have. And this is how they eat their caviar while the rest of the world suffers. Here is a uh, questioning of FEMA. Let's... Do you see the absurdity that American citizens are getting their 750 and then, yes, struggling through a very complicated process to meet the thresholds necessary to get the aid they need to have housing, food, and shelter, while your agency is contracting with not-for-profits to easily hand out access to those who are here placed here illegally. Do you see the absurdity? Congressman, our mission is to support people, help people before, during, and after disasters. And do I you think that there is, ma'am, do you think that, do you think in responding to an emergency, the priority of government ought to be to ensure that American citizens are triaged and that the services of FEMA are focused on responding to them and their service programs first? I absolutely believe that the services that FEMA provides should be supporting the people that have been impacted by disasters. Should it be, should there be equity in that distribution and response? Should there be fairness in that response? 
we should make sure that all people have access to our programs and that we Fair enough. enough. The so it's, it's my time that I get four minutes and two minutes to do it. So in fairness, do you not see the inequity in those placed here illegally having taxpayers support a plane ticket, a house, a hotel, food, cell phones, access to health care? Do you not see the inequity that they have access immediately? I want us to be a welcoming nation, but if we cannot respond to those who are living in emergencies, then we do not have the right to claim that we are the Federal Emergency Management Administration. Do you not see the inequity? Congress directed. No, Congress established law. You have to prioritize triage and decide. During COVID, there were federal agencies and local governments who were responsible for providing lots of services. We said, in this emergency, you're not going to do that. We told federal employees, get back out on the ground because you've got to respond to a public health pandemic. And mess, most of them were never involved in public health, uh, pan, uh, health response. You established the priority. Why can you not say today that the priority ought to have been to make sure that American citizens were getting first response, adequate response, and not distracted response. Why can't you not say that? Our priority is okay. the American people, and we administered our disaster and, programs. And you, and you will not, and you will not admit to or acknowledge the inequities. I, I'm not trying to be combative. This is absurd. Today, when when you spend some time, and my colleagues talk about misinformation, first, misinformation is freedom of speech, whether it's true or not. That, that's, but, but you know what fuels misinformation? The inequity that FEMA has engaged in. Because it allows for people to assume, whether true or not, a level of either incompetence, inefficiency, or lack of concern for those who are struggling the most when they see individuals enter this country illegally and then are transported here and receiving services. And you know that it is easier to access the shelter and services funding than it is to access disaster relief aid, housing assistance, uh, 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 small business aid. You know that it's more complicated. Doesn't that in and of itself fuel the misinformation? Congressman, we are administering that program as directed by Congress. Uh, you are not administering the program as directed by Congress. You are, you, we, we establish the law, we, we establish the provisions, and we expect the person whether it's the president or the administrator uh, uh, of FEMA, to decide what is and is not priority in response to an emergency. And by that very measure, with all due respect, the agency has failed. And it has lost focus. My time is up. Uh, I uh, uh, yield back to the chairman. Chair, thanks. Yeah, it's, it's again, she's like a pre-programmed response on an automated machine. This is exactly, in my mind, it, it's the definition of hell. It, it's not being able to get to somebody that can just think logically. It's, it's just an automated response. Automated response. It, it is, and that's how we are taught from a very early age. Uh, even when we go to kindergarten, first grade, it's all about that automated response when we should be able to freely use our own senses to decide what is right and what is wrong. And unfortunately, our discernment has been so extremely polluted that people really don't know. They honestly don't know right from wrong. And here you see elephants protecting their, their young. Look at how they did that just so instinctively naturally they put the babies in the center and they circle their wagons and it's so obvious again that none of the structures on the planet from a political standpoint have been uh at least at this point in time they they don't have anybody's best interest in mind but their own that's true and that's just a fact that's not disinformation source bless and namaste namaste